Welcome to the second installment of Code Cleanup and today we're going to take a look at how you can name your elements inside a program, be it fields, properties, function, classes, you name it, whatever. So the first tip, uh, what's the first tip? Well, it's keep a naming convention, always do that, never, uh, never take another route when you actually try to name a, an element inside your program. So. Here are some examples. So here's a class name named, named item repository and this one starts with a non-capital letter. Usually in Java, you start with a capital letter due to variables being named uh, camel case, but uh, starting with a non-capital letter. So for example, here it will be really weird to actually instantiate this uh, variable, this class I mean, since I'm gonna have to type in the well, the type of the data, and then we're gonna give it a name, let's say item repository, because it's, it is an item repository, and then that equals new item repository, and whatever that goes in here. Um, as you can see, we're repeating ourselves, and it's hard to distinguish between the data type and the data name, right? So that's why people convened into actually naming them with uh, or starting their names with capital letters here because it would be it's much much easier to read out now you can basically name your variables uh, the type they are in that the, the type they are without actually messing them up right and here as well another example I have here is with a constant so for example you have max clicks it's in snake case and then inside this function we have a was clicked before. Well, which one is changeable? Which one you can change? Well, we don't know at first glance if this was on another in another uh, place inside our uh, software. So that's why people uh, started naming them with all uh, with uh, all capital cases like max clicks, right? And same thing uh, down here with was clicked before. As you can see, we have the variable name clicked item and the variable name was clicked before. Well, if a uh, new person on the project comes here and says, okay, well, I need another variable. What's it gonna be? It's gonna be, I don't know, was clicked after. And uh, it's gonna, the style is gonna di diverge even more from the actual convention. Okay, so that's, that's tip number one, one A actually. Uh, Next up is a counter to the first one is uh, don't use naming conventions or same naming conventions universally throughout multiple languages Lang languages right so what i mean by that is well if you have a naming convention for your front end for let's say javascript and you have a naming from convention for your back end i don't know c sharp for example well those should be kept different uh usually because the standard uh, library behind the languages have different naming conventions, all right? So try to keep the naming the same as the standard libraries. And here's an example in which uh, we can see the same naming conventions for CSS classes and uh, JavaScript variables, right? So we have the same first column. Now, this is fine for this simple example, but let's say we have a huge project and we want to find out where the first column class is used. Well, it could be kind of difficult right now. Uh, we can just control F and say, all right, well, or just select this and say, okay, first column is here, here, and here, but they're not the same thing. These two are classes, but this one is an, act is an actual variable inside JavaScript. So it would be much, much easier if you could actually just have first dash column and here first dash column. And then you, you would be able to notice that, oh, well, this is actually uh, the same as this one. And those are both CSS, th those both refer to the CSS classes behind. 
they don't refer to some variable or whatnot. Sure, you could argue that you could search for a uh, class equals first column, but you wouldn't be guaranteed to always uh, have first column in just one, uh, or every element will have just that one class. It could be more than just first column, and then it wouldn't really actually find all of them. So, keeping a different convention from uh, uh, between JavaScript and uh, the CSS classes is a pretty good idea because then you can actually see every single class where it's used and every single variable where it's used without uh, mixing and matching them up. Same with the ID here. I just gave a simple example here. There's no point in actually having a uppercase and uppercase here. This is more uh, C sharp style and you don't have to actually use a capital letter at the start of your camel case name so you can start with like title id or something or just title i guess all right so that's uh that's a counter to the first one so that's where you shouldn't actually have uh, naming conventions throughout your whole project just uh keep them nicely uh in their own on their own languages all right next up let's take a look here so Name your variables by their role and start with their primary role. What does that mean? Um, that means that what you should do is um, start uh, the first word of each variable or function of class, whatever, should be the most important one. So here are some examples. Right, so you have here a init data, and this guy has two lists, right? It has two lists of uh, invoices, and one of them is selected invoices, and the other one in is invoices sent, right? Well, which one is uh, the better choice? The better choice here actually kind of depends, but in this scenario, explicitly, since you're using invoices, invoices everywhere, uh, you might as well name this invoices selected, not selected invoices, because then you know, oh, well, where, which uh, lists use invoices? Well, you can take a look here, here, and whatever else is there a variable that starts with the name invoices, right? So it's much more easier to, uh, to notice then invoices selected. Okay. All right. And same thing with, uh, these integers so num sent and selected num then again which one is the most important word here it's the num that it i think at least because um the role of that number is to actually count something behind them and all the counts you might want to group them together inside your code somewhere so you say well num selected selected if i could type correctly okay and then same thing with the variables here. So we see here there's add data, there's init data, there's on click and data process. Um, function or uh, methods or functions usually start with a uh, verb instead of a, of, a, of a noun. So first you should actually just uh, name them with add and then data add do what it adds data it doesn't data process right so this one doesn't really work in this sentence what does this method do it does data process it, it processes the data so therefore their primary role is actually that it processes that it adds that what the data then again you might you might be able to group them by uh, the entity it works with but in this case, I think it's a fair, fair reasoning. So you can say process data here. And same thing with handlers. Most handlers actually start with on something, on click, on uh, hold, on, on move, on whatever, right? Um, so that's about it with the roles here. Also, don't, don't be afraid to actually use uh, to use explicit or to be afraid to be explicit. 
Uh, here, for example, we have a function public void display and it does a lot of things here. It displays some routes on a map and it also updates some details. So in this case, well, you might want to break it down into two functions and call them separately, but let's say there's, there's a need for this function specifically. So uh, then again, then you should actually name it, name it by what it does. So then I don't have to take a look here and oh, it also updates uh, the details and it gets in a list of addresses because I might, I might wonder why do you need a list of addresses here, right? So let's say uh, display routes and update details and that kind of goes out of scope but yeah so now i actually know what this method does without really looking at the code inside of it okay next up <clears throat> and one of the most important thing is don't make spelling mistakes like really think about it you're gonna name a variable and that's inside your own function that's fine that's fine i don't I don't criticize you for that. That's not really a big issue. But if you, what if you named your variable inside a class wrong? Like here we have a voter class and it says, well, private string address. And you, you're in IntelliJ and you hit Alt insert and you uh, automatically generate the getter and setter. Then your getter would look something like this. So it's a get address without uh, the double D, right? So it wouldn't be, it, would be a typo in there as well. And inside of the setter, same thing. Inside of the uh, parameter, same thing. And this could propagate up the chain to the front end. If you have, for example, a function that uh, serializes into JSON, let's say our object automatically. So it looks at address and says, okay, well, this is gonna result in something like uh, an object that has address Ta -da -da, and whatnot here, right? And this thing, and then now, now the front end guys are gonna have to take care of your spelling mistakes from the actual backend. And it may, maybe it would pro propagate even uh, lower to the database. Here you have uh, the software that automatically generates the database structure for you. And it will take this address field and be like, okay, well, I'm gonna create an address with just one D here. And it's gonna be like, they're everywhere. And people are going to be very confused why their code doesn't work because they've written something like, I don't know, a post with uh, the address written properly and it just doesn't work because, well, you spelled, you misspelled one single word inside your uh, implementation, right? It's a simple fix, I know, but in some cases it might take some time to realize the issues here. Right, and could propagate. So be careful with that and don't be lazy when you type in uh, variable names. All right, so that's about it for today. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you got something out of it, right? So to recap, keep a naming convention, right? Simple enough. You've probably heard that a million times before, uh, but don't use them for all languages. Each language has their own uh, standard library and it's going to get awkward if you want to use a different style. Uh, name your variables by their primary role first. Right, so start with invoices, don't start with selected. Even though it sounds better, it's probably better to just start with their prim primary role. And for the functions, it's usually a verb. Um, don't forget to be explicit if needed. Right, Long names don't hurt. They are probably the most efficient uh, type of comment here. Like I don't have to read the line of comment here. I, I can already see that what, what it's doing. Um, and the most important one, don't make spelling mistakes. Spelling mistakes are just really, really bad inside an application. All right, so thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.